go to myplate.gov. There is tons of useful information on that website. So calculations. Calculations are very important, all right? So the first one I'm just gonna point out is our body mass index, which is our BMI. So if you've been to the doctor's office, I'm sure they may have told you about your BMI. I don't think it's a good indicator of being overweight or obesity in athletes, right? Because there's a lot of factors they don't take into. Um, they don't take into fact your muscle mass, right? So for example, I weigh 170 pounds and I'm five foot 11 and a half and it has me at risk of being obese. I did eat like a, I did eat terribly last night, so I kind of feel like that today, but I'm not too worried about what your body mass index is. I'm more concerned about what your body fat percentage is. So when all of you get back to campus, if you have questions about your body fat or want a body fat analysis done, you come see me, it takes literally two minutes, we'll give you a body fat analysis and we know where you're gonna be as far as that. That is a better indicator. A lot of stuff nutritionally, you have to change your body weight into kilograms. It is very simple, right? So you take your weight and you just divide it by 2.2. So for example, a 150 pound athlete is a 68.2 kilogram athlete, all right? So on nutrition facts and labels and a lot of stuff that you're gonna see, and here's just some examples, right? So carbohydrates, you would need four grams per kilogram of body weight, all right? So you always want to have that formula in mind if you're looking to count calories or how much your portion sizes should be, right? So your body weight divided by 2.2. And then we just have posted here what you see on all food labels, right? Our nutrition facts. And I'm not gonna bore you with those. We're gonna dig into these a little differently, but something we really wanna watch are, you know, our fat, especially our saturated fat and our trans fat, our carbs, especially our total sugars, okay? Um, those are things we're gonna talk about in a second, but just give you an idea of what to expect when you're looking at your serving size, serving size and nutrition facts. Portion sizes, right? So if I have athletes that are looking to lose or gain weight, portion size is obviously something you have to take into consideration. This is just the guide and gives you approximates and how to figure out portion sizes, okay? I'm not gonna leave this up there too long. One thing that I didn't mention in the beginning is that we'll put this PowerPoint on our strength and conditioning website. And something I really wanted to mention is don't log off soon as you log in because we take role and attendance and it tells you exactly how long you were on these sessions. So we expect you to be here. I'm not keeping you long, right? So don't log in for three minutes and then log off. We're gonna know, tell your coaches, it doesn't count. Um, also on our strength and conditioning website, we have a PDF, some flyers with all nutritional advice that could help you. And one of them is portion size. So if you're looking to control your portion size or increase your portion sizes, you know, it is a good tool to have. So our energy nutrients, these are very important. And we're gonna start with our carbohydrates. Everyone knows carbs because they taste good, but just some interesting facts. It is the main source of fuel for your body. So when you start any kind of movement, carbs are fueling that movement, right? So we need to have carbs in our diet, especially being athletes. Timing is important. So depending on the sport that you play, we are gonna look to consume our carbohydrates one to four hours before competition. During competition, or let's say even during a workout, right? We wanna keep hydrating and we're gonna keep taking fluids whenever possible. If your practice or your competition is short in duration, and I'm saying like less than 45 minutes, water is enough, okay? If your competition's gonna last for several hours and you're gonna be on your feet, you need to start thinking about Gatorades and things like that, right? But think short workouts, especially any athletes that worked with me in the past, we're 40, 45 minutes, you don't need sugary drinks to get you through that workout, water will do. And then we still need our carbohydrates after, and our goal is one to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbs post-exercise or post-competition, okay? Carbs are critical for muscle recovery and restoring the energy stores of glycogen in the body. There are two types of carbohydrates. We have our simple sugars, right? We find them in our fruits, our table sugar, and our milk sugar. We have our complex carbohydrates, starch and fiber, and they are all found in a variety of foods from different food groups, right? Including our grains, fruits, vegetables, and dairy groups. 
And here are just some examples of the carbs, right? So we got our fruits, we got our Gatorade, we've got a baked potato, and we got our breads. Let's move to proteins, right? Proteins are huge, especially if we are training in the weight room. They are the building blocks for our body. We need protein to grow. It is important to get proteins because they help build and repair muscle. During exercise, muscle is broken down and must be repaired with protein, right? So if we're working out, we need to get protein in our body, right? I can't stress enough how important protein is for us athletes to make sure we're getting in our diet, right? Post-exercise, we should be consuming proteins within an hour. Now, that timing is off depending on who you talk to. I like to suggest to try to consume proteins at least an hour after competition or after workout. If you can't get it within that hour, sooner the better, all right? We want to be consuming adequate amounts of protein throughout the day. And the reason for that is our body will store carbohydrates, our body will store fats, but our body does not store protein, right? So there's no protein source that our body could go in and find to help repair that muscle. So we got to consume adequate amounts throughout the day. It builds ligaments and tendons to hold muscles and support bone. I always stress this one also too because I care about your health I don't want our athletes being injured. So anything we could do to prevent injury in the weight room, on the field, right? Getting protein in that diet is going to be very useful. Proteins also can be a source of energy, all right? It's not the best source of energy. I like to use the example of, like you've probably heard before when marathon runners have hit the wall, right? That's when they're changing energy sources and trying to dig into that protein. And that's why marathon runners or really endurance athletes really struggle towards the end, right? Because protein's not a great source of energy, but it can be used as a source of energy. They are found in a variety of food groups, right? Grains, protein foods, and dairy groups. And here we got some good sources of protein. We got some fish. Dairy products are a fantastic source of protein, eggs, and grilled chicken, right? Other sources, lean meats, cheese, cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, I don't eat it, but it's a very underrated source of protein, right? I don't know how anyone could eat it, but if you could stomach cottage cheese, go for it. Nuts are a good source, right? But we're going to need a lot of protein, so you have to eat a heck of a lot of nuts to get your protein for the day. So I always like to use nuts as a combination. So if you could get nuts and mix them with cottage cheese or mix them with your yogurt, go ahead. Unless you're going to sit there and eat pounds and pounds of nuts, you're not going to be able to get it all through nuts, right? And then we also have beans as a source of protein. So let's talk fats. It is a concentrated source of energy. It provides essential fatty acids, and it is needed for the absorption and transport of vitamins A, D, E, and K, right? So if you're taking a multivitamin or a vitam, vitamin, we need to have some fat in our diet because that is going to get those vitamins to the right place. There are three types of fat. We have saturated fats. They are solid at room temperature, and it increases our LDL cholesterol. Our LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol, cholesterol that we don't want in our body. So saturated fats really aren't the best for us, right? Because it's increasing that bad cholesterol. Examples, butter, fat found in and around meats, and whole dairy products. Our trans fats, they are solid at room temperature. They're even worse than saturated fats. They raise our bad cholesterol, but it also lowers our healthy cholesterol cholesterol, right? So HDL, that's our healthy cholesterol, right? So we really want to stay away from trans fat. And unfortunately, we find a lot of trans fat in all the stuff that tastes really freaking good, right? We got them in our baked goods, crackers, cookies, and cereals. So we just got to try to limit our trans fat, right? And then we have our unsaturated fats. These are the fats we want to try to get. They are liquid at room temperature, and they lower our bad cholesterol, okay? And some examples, Avocados, nuts, fish, canola, canola, canola oil, and olive oil. All stuff I don't eat, right? So I have to figure out other ways for me to control my, my cholesterol. But if you like avocados and fish and all that stuff, it is a great source of fat for your diet. 
Again, fats are a major fuel source for athletes. They provide protection, again, with that injury prevention that's important, and too little can greatly impact physique and performance. So to all my football guys that lift in McKinney with me, when you stay for an extra five minutes and you take off your shirts and you want to see your physique and take your selfies of yourself in the mirror, you still got to get some kind of fat in your diet. Healthy sources of fat, peanut butter, avocados, and again, nuts. I'm a huge peanut butter guy. It's got protein and fat in it. So if you are stuck for a snack and all you got is peanut butter, you're eating peanut butter. I can't recommend getting peanut butter in your diet more than anything else, right? Even if it's just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you cannot go wrong with that, all right? And here's some fats in moderation. Of course, all the stuff that I like to eat and all the stuff that we shouldn't eat, all right? Your kids, your athletes, you're younger, you're gonna metabolize this a little bit faster. So I'm not gonna tell you not to eat it, but moderation is the key, right? So your cake, your french fries, ice cream, potato chips, right? I know everyone likes at the calf, you know, french fries and chicken tenders. I think that's the go-to for everyone. They can't mess that up. Here's what we're looking at for our caloric needs, all right, for us athletes. So preseason, right, we're looking at 50 to 60% of your calories should come from carbohydrates, all right? And the reason is that is that you're starting to increase your intensity. You're starting to work a little bit more at practice. You need more fuel to get through it. Our fats, 25 to 35%, and then our protein, 15 to 25%. So that's a little bit higher than recommended because you're still gonna be probably spending some time in the weight room and doing some strenuous practice where you need to rebuild that muscle tissue, okay? In season, so of course, we're probably even going a little bit harder because we are in competition. So we're increase, increasing your carbohydrates, 55 to 65%. We kind of keeping our fats around the same. And then our protein is going down just a little bit because instead of maybe doing strength training four days a week, we're doing it too. And then off season, and probably all of us right now can consider you an off season athlete. Some of you are more in your off season than others because some of you are gonna be competing in January. But off season, we're lowering those carbs because like I said, you're not practicing, right? We're keeping the fats around the same, but we're increasing and we already flipped it. So I'm not gonna go back. We're increasing our protein, right? Because we're probably in that off season spending more time in the weight room. I'm gonna take a time out and get a drink. <clears throat> and I told you, we are flying through this, all right? So our food groups. So I just wanna review these and I wanna make sure we make the most out of these food groups. And this will help with some food choices that you might have to make. So we got our grain group. What we wanna choose more often, and they're all listed here, right? So I'm not gonna read them all off but you can just take a look of what we wanna choose most out of the grain group. And then of course, choose less often all the stuff that we all like to eat, okay? So just in moderation, just try to keep that in mind. Our vegetable group, right? Choose most often our dark green vegetables, your orange vegetables, your legumes and starchy vegetables, right? So that's potatoes and different things like that. Choose less often all the stuff that tastes really, really good, right? Your french fries, your potato salad, scalloped potatoes, um, baked beans, all that other good stuff. Fruit group, choose most often whole or cut up fruits. That means we got to go to the grocery store, the produce section and buy our own fruit and clean it and cut it up ourselves, right? Choose less often canned or frozen fruit that are in syrup, juices, and then punches, <coughs> and then fruit juices with added sugars, right? We want to stay away from all that added sugar stuff. So if you are going to eat fruit, take an extra five minutes, get to the store, clean it, cut it up and eat it. Our dairy group, choose most often fat-free milk, fat-free milk products such as buttermilk, cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt. Choose less often, right? And then I just have one problem with this, right? Is chocolate milk. I am a huge believer in chocolate milk, all right? Especially after competition or post-exercise. It is great source of carb and protein that your body needs after exercise or after competition, all right? So we have this on there less often as if you're in your off season and you're not doing anything, we just don't want you sitting around drinking a gallon of chocolate milk. But if all you can get after a competition or a workout is some peanut butter and chocolate milk, which is an, probably an awesome combination, you are set as far as your carb and protein needs, okay? So if you like, everyone likes chocolate milk, right? So if whoever out there, whoever supplies food at your house, if you can get some chocolate milk to have post-exercise, that is 
huge, all right? Our protein group, again, we already talked about these, but we really want to concentrate on those lean meats, fish, poultry, eggs, peanut butter, nuts, and seeds, and then less often, the lunch meats, the ground beef, the hot dogs, fried meats, fried fish, fried poultry, poultry with skin, sauces, everything they probably serve in the calf. We'll work on that though, the calf menu, all right? Weight gain, all right? So we're just gonna go quickly and to give you some suggestions on what you do, what you should do or to help gain some weight, okay? Because I've been getting a lot of questions regarding weight gain. So we're gonna touch base really fast. When gaining weight, is an, it is important that you're gaining muscle and not fat, right? That is very, very important. We need to add at least 500 to 1,000 calories to maintain a one to two pound weight gain a week. I always fall in that one to two pound gain or loss, all right? Couple reasons. One, we want you to be healthy and gain, health, gain your weight in a healthy way, right? So we're not gaining that fat. And we wanna make realistic goals for you guys, right? So one to two pounds a week isn't really that unrealistic. So if I said you had to come in and gain 10 pounds this week, that is a lot of food you gotta eat, a lot of food you gotta buy. It is not realistic, right? So if you are an athlete who's looking to gain some weight now, figure out the math. So if you're a football guy and you need to gain 20 pounds and you need, you're gonna be on campus in January, we need to start increasing those calories. We wanna consume at least three meals a day and two to three snacks. Don't skip meals, especially breakfast. I just read in a strength and conditioning um, journal the other day that they approximate that 50% of people do not eat breakfast. And I always use this when I talk to anyone about eating breakfast. If Nugget's out there watching, I don't know if Dejan's out there watching, but we talked last semester about how important it is, it is to eat breakfast. And the reason why we couldn't get it in is because we wanted to sleep a little bit longer. So we made a decision for him to play in the NFL. He's gonna wake up 15 minutes early and he's gonna get that breakfast in him. So don't skip breakfast and make sure you have a protein source in that breakfast. Eat larger than normal portions, right? So we had that portion size graphic that we showed you. We're eating larger than normal portions. We could pick a little bit higher calorie foods and beverages. Pack snacks to go for extra calories. So if you are looking to weight, gain weight and you're home now, right? So this should be easy to snack. But if you are home and you have a job, don't leave the house without a mix of trail or granola, fruit, peanut butter, or yogurt, right? We all got some protein in there and they're gonna give you those extra calories, okay? That is the safe way to get those calories and get that one to two pound weight gain. All right, and then again, eat high calorie, high protein, high carbohydrate foods one hour before and after your workout. All right, so that's just some tips on weight gain, weight loss. And I did have a picture of the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man recommended by head coach Mark Duda that he wanted me on to put on the weight loss picture, but for some reason it didn't save. All right, so if you're looking to lose weight, again, we're trying to do it safely, one to two pounds per week. All right, so by way we're going to get there is decrease calories by around 500 each day by decreasing food intake and then adding additional exercise. Do not drastically cut your consumption, right? So we don't want you to skip meals. We're probably just going to cut back on our portion size just a little bit. But we do want to look into decreasing our carbohydrate calories, increasing your protein calories, limit fast food and fried foods, limit sweets, drink more water and low calorie beverages. So if you're looking to lose weight and you don't need a sugary sports drink after your workout, that is a great way to save on some calories. And then again, never skip breakfast and get enough sleep. Sleep is important for all athletes, right? Make sure you get the appropriate amount of sleep. In a future Listen and Learn, we are gonna have the four R's of recovery. So we're gonna talk more about you know hydration and rest, okay? Um, but that's all the information I have for you today. I think it's probably been between 15 to 20 minutes. I'm looking at the clock, it's 225. So if you have questions for me, Eric is on the computer, toss them into the chat. I encourage you, even if you don't have a question, maybe stick around and listen if there are any, because they may be something that might be helpful for you too. So if you have questions, throw them in the chat. If not, have a great weekend.
So we're waiting. And if you're still out there, we need to know what you're doing strength and conditioning wise, right? So go to the strength and conditioning tab, click on that questionnaire and submit on Sundays what you are doing so we could tell your coaches and we could, you know, reward you guys when you get back to campus. Yeah, so this PowerPoint will be on probably Monday on the strength and conditioning website, so you can go through it and just go through, you know, anything like that. And then again, if you have questions, you all should know how to reach out to me. You can text, call, email me. Ooh, that is a good question because we really have to be careful with those peanut allergies. I would say any kind of dairy product is probably the best way to go. Um, like I said, the nuts aren't really a huge piece of the protein puzzle, right? It's good for a combination, but I would definitely stay away from any of that. If you could just replace that with some kind of dairy product, I, that would be my advice if you had the peanut butter allergy, couldn't do peanut butter. What is a good protein snack breakfast? Ah, that is perfect. And I actually have notes on that. So I knew I was going to get that question, right? So if you have an early morning practice or a game, right, what we want to do is make sure we get those carbs and proteins, all right? So you want to get some kind of fluid or sports drink, depending how early you are and you really can't eat a full breakfast in the morning because you're competing or lifting early, a protein bar, anything like that. If you're looking for a full breakfast, I am going eggs. I'm going, if I'm a weight gainer, I am going bacon. I am going dairy products. I'm having my milk. And then I am putting some yogurt alongside of it. What, I need to know what sport, though. So whoever put that chat in, whoever needs to lose 20 pounds, football. football guy. Good. So 20 pounds. So we got two pounds a week. So you got 10 weeks, which is doable. So just review these slides. Go over the tips on how you're going to eat lower portions and increase that protein intake. Since you're a football guy and I work directly with football, you need to get my contact information. I need to call you and we'll discuss your current weight and how many calories you should be taking in per day. So that's probably the best advice, but you're gonna to wanna to still increase that protein and you're gonna to wanna to take away all those carbs and all that crappy stuff. How much cardio do you average in your college workout? What, do we have a sport on this one? All right, Gabe is football. Gabe, the best advice I can give you cardio-wise is on the strength and conditioning tab, you're going to find football workouts for the first four weeks. There is conditioning added into those workouts, right? So there's two days a week of conditioning. Work that in. Nothing else. We spend a lot of time working on those programs. Do the conditioning that's prescribed in those workouts, and you will be set when you get here in January. So whatever testing we're going to do in January, football-wise, conditioning-wise, you will be set if you follow that plan exactly. You don't need a gym. You can just get outside. If you don't have a field you can get to, you could use a street or an alleyway. But that's what I'm going to recommend for you if you're a football guy. To bulk up? Ah. <sighs> Pasta is a good meal to get your carbs in, right? So if you're looking to get carbs in pre-competition, that is a good way. If you want to add some weight, you're going to add calories. Of course, you're going to add calories to your diet. If I'm having pasta, I am having some kind of protein with it, right? So that's your meatball or your sausage, right? So you got to find there. I'm, I'm disgusting. I drink milk with any sauce-based product I eat. So I drink milk with spaghetti or pizza and things like that, just to, for me to get some extra protein in. So you're gonna get those carbs, but we wanna try to get better foods in you if you're looking to gain that good weight, right? But if you're a pasta guy and everyone loves pasta, I would just try as best as I can to get more protein out of that. So like a meat sauce, meatball, sausage, any kind of protein that you can put in is gonna help you. We are going to talk about what we got to do recovery wise on another listen and learn and we'll answer all those questions but if you can't get enough protein in you from a natural source after your workout 
I can't tell you what to take because it doesn't fall under my certifications, but I could recommend and tell you the same thing I have my son take. He takes a whey protein powder mixed with a milk, some kind of dairy source, post-strength training, right? So whey protein is just dissolves a lot faster in your muscles, so that's going to help you recover post-exercise. So if you can't get your hands on some good protein after a strength training workout, you need to do it through a supplement. So that could be protein bar or a whey protein powder mix. And if you're looking to add weight, I would mix it with some yogurt or some milk. If you're looking to trim weight, then you're just mixing it with, you're just mixing it with water. But a protein supplement, if you can't get it through your regular food source, you gotta get. If we want to do that, the only thing I want to recommend, I'm still going to say one to two pounds is good, but I don't want you limiting your calories too, too much because then that's just going to take away any kind of muscle mass. So I'm going to say increase the frequency of your workout, right? So if you're looking to lose a little bit more weight, we're still just going to look to cut those calories by like 500, but maybe just we're going to add a little bit more exercise. So you're doing the strength and conditioning plan that you know I prescribed for you, and you did that in the morning and you feel okay, you're gonna go out for a little bit longer of a walk later at night or, or a light jog. That's what I would recommend if you wanted to do more than that. But one to two is fine. Oh, my man, Nico. He told, he told me, yes. As soon as at least two local football players put in their pre-participation packet, we will start Thursday. So if the five or six or seven, oh, how many are out there that can get to McKinney Hall on Thursday at 1.30, we will work out this Thursday at 1.30. That is going to be our prescribed time. If you're not local and you still want to join us and your pre-participation work is done, we will go live on Zoom Thursday at 1.30. Coach Duda and myself will be there. We will coach you up. We will watch you exercise. We will watch you work out. But local guys, if you want to get on campus, work with me one-on-one -on -one or in a small group, we got to make sure we get that pre-participation packed in. All athletes, dude, I'm waiting for our men's basketball. Let's go. Get your stuff in. Yes, you can fax it or you can email to Lack. What's the email address? Lackawanna Cross Country Athletic? Athletics at Lackawanna.edu. You could email it to or you could fax it. Do you know the fax off the top? We don't know the fax off the top of the hand. But if you go on the website and click on pre participation forms, it tells you where exactly where you have to send it to. And if you can't find that on the website, Nico, call me and then I'll walk you through it. If there's. If you guys got nothing else, man, this is a lot longer than I wanted to work today, right? I thank you for joining us. Wait, we might have one more. If I am lifting and getting and gaining weight from lifting, but at the same time trying to lose fat, how would I know if I'm increasing and decreasing the amount of fat? Right. So a couple, couple ways that I would tell you. One, just by looking in the mirror, right? You're gonna see your body change. And that takes time, right? So you're gonna to have to give that a couple weeks, right? So hopefully you're just gonna start seeing a body transformation. Another thing like I like to do, and we we'll, can't do it obviously now because I need to see you in person, is body fat analysis, right? So if your weight is, if I body fat analysis test you in January and your body fat is 18, yet I test you six weeks after and your weight is the same, but your body fat is down to 13, we know that you're gaining the right weight and losing the wrong weight. So get with me as soon as you get on campus so we could do that. But just right now, I would just say on how you look and how you feel. If that's it, everyone, that's another, that's a wrap. Check off another listen and learn. I know I'm gonna be back, I think next week possibly, I think it might be recovery, right? So we'll talk about ways that we are gonna recover from you know, competition and exercise. But uh, make sure you do those questionnaires and those surveys. Make sure I want to send out shirts. I want to promote you guys and uh, be safe, wear your mask, take flight, and be ready for 21.